All right, so Mi 11X Pixel 6 Pro port. Now, we are talking about the Google Pixel 6 Pro, which was recently revealed, unveiled, launched, whatever you want to call it. Now, that is the device which got Android 12, and it does have a ton of features, and the software of that particular device has been ported over to our lovely Mi 11X, which is also known as the Poco F3 and the Redmi K40. There was a port earlier, and this is the latest update to that. I have installed it yesterday, and I have ran the benchmarks and all sorts of things. So, this is a complete review, and without getting into further detail, let me tell you that if you've not subscribed already please subscribe because it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us to make amazing content like this if you think you like chatting with like-minded people join us on telegram we are about to hit 1500 members over there you can follow us on instagram twitter and facebook and last but not the least if you think the hard work is worth the effort please click on the join button and support the channel now without further ado hello awesome people welcome to phone ops my name is kalash let's get going All right, so let's see what we have here. Google Pixel 6 Pro port Android 12. That's sort of a tongue twister there. Elliot updated on the 15th of December, 2021. Now there is a disclaimer, which you should always check. Your warranty is wide and stuff like that. If you talk about the change log, updated to new base, fixed dual SIM option. That is a good thing. Decrypted storage, check Google change log for base change log. Basically the change log that has happened for the Pixel 6 Pro, that's what they're referring to. Now, a lot of people will tell me, make an installation video. Trust me, it's not that difficult. You just need a computer, right? So you need to download and install Xiaomi.eu stable, right? If you are any of the earlier ports, you can st skip this step, then flash the firmware that is linked in the description. And you have to do that from TWRP. You have to download the ROM and extract it, okay, into a particular folder. Then you have to reboot to fastboot and flash using this particular bat file and the phone will automatically reboot. That's what the change log is about. They do have a support group. So if you have any questions or queries or you're stuck, which I can't answer in the Telegram group, go ahead and check. Now, let's get back to the ROM. So the reason I have refresh rate enabled over here is because this device does support variable refresh rate and this ROM is working well with the variable refresh rate. To the left, you have Google Feed, which is doing a splendid job. It works absolutely fine. And it's really, really good to see the refresh rate switching is so, uh, you know, consistent and stable. So that's something good. So when you're scrolling the Google Feed, if you go to the home screen, the transition is very, very smooth. If you swipe from the top to bottom, you will see that you have your Android 12 quick tiles, which work absolutely fine along with the mic access, camera access, these privacy tiles and stuff. You do have a built-in screen recorder, which allows you to record internal and external audio. Now, the screen recorder for the Mi 11X has not been a problem, even if you go ahead and use the device after that. Remember, this device comes with a Snapdragon 870, which is a pretty powerful processor, right? And even when the screen recording is on 120 Hertz, refresh rate is on, it's recording things just fine. So let's go ahead and stop and see how good the audio and the recording is actually over here. So processed, let's go ahead and play that. Remember this device comes with a Snapdragon 870, which is pretty powerful. The rate is on, it's recording things just fine. Okay, so this ROM in particular does have issues with media playback for which there is a fix. I will probably mention the fix in the description. That is the reason you have the stutters, but the video recording or the screen recording is working absolutely fine. If you go ahead and edit the tiles over here, you will see that you have a few additional features. They work absolutely okay, nothing to worry there. The good thing is the app icon animations are smooth as butter. Now remember, this is not AOSP stock Android. This is Google's version of Android, which they put on their Pixel devices. So you will have a lot of emphasis on the Tensor chipset and this is a Snapdragon. So there might be some things which are broken and we will talk about them, okay? Now moving on, in the app drawer, you don't have much. If you press and hold on the home screen, you have home settings for your standard Pixel launcher, which works absolutely okay. Then you do have your Android 12 widgets doing a great job again. Moving on, you have wallpaper in style, which will showcase the performance and power of Monet UI, including themed icons. So if you go to curated culture and say, set up this particular wallpaper, home and lock screen, and bam, you have a green UI with themed icons doing a brilliant job. So kudos to Google for such a good UI color implementation. That is really, really neat. 
Now, apart from this, you don't really have much on the home screen. You have wallpaper and style, which allows you to customize, which I just showed you. And at the bottom, you have the Google search bar and the assistant shortcuts, which are working absolutely okay. Now, this ROM does come with Google Camera Go. So that does, you know, give you a chance to click some pictures at least. Uh, yeah, the refresh rate is panicking there. Anyways, uh, let's go to settings over here. Okay and let's go to about phone so if you go to android version so the kernel that they're using is the disrupt kernel over here it does come with the december security patch and android version 12 with all the easter egg goodies doing a great job right now this is very very pure form of android that google puts on their devices so if you go to battery over here you have battery percentage but you don't have thermal profiles okay now you do have the game dashboard which can be activated but i had difficulties with enabling the game dashboard in uh, you know some games like i tried bgmi and even in call of duty mobile i was not able to get it to work probably it will work for others but it did not work for me so if you actually go to system over here you have live translate which is available and works fine right you have backup, which allows you to backup your stuff to your Google Drive. System update, don't use this because your device is not a pixel and you might have some issues, although it will not allow you to update anyways. But yeah, then you have rules and gestures. Now under gestures, quip tap doesn't work. Swipe fingerprint for notifications doesn't work. System navigation, lift to check the phone, tap to check the phone, these features are working absolutely fine. So, you know, as I said, this is a port ROM. There are some features that are working. There are some features that are not working. But one important factor over here is the app icon animations. The smoothness of this particular ROM is really, really good. Everything works so cohesively, so fluently that you can not go ahead and, you know, appreciate enough to how smooth this particular ROM is. Now, as I said, this ROM does not come with a lot of customization. So let's actually dive into settings and see if you have anything different that is offered on Pixel devices. For example, if you go to network and internet, you have a dedicated menu for Wi-Fi, which is known as internet, right? You do have network preferences for turn off Wi-Fi automatically, notify for public networks. These are standard Android 12 features that are available. You do have adaptive connectivity over there. Connected devices is basically your Bluetooth menu. Then you have the apps section where you can see recently opened apps, default applications, assistant, screen time, and all those things. As you can see, screen time is basically your digital well-being sort of thing. Under notifications, you do have an important feature called notification history. You should go ahead and enable it. It is something like iOS. It is really, really useful, and it will give you a complete history of your notifications in case you have missed it. We've already seen the battery section. Under storage, you don't really have a lot of options, but under sound and vibration, it was stuck there for a couple of seconds. You have some basic features and functions. And so under wallpaper and style, you have the customization menu. In security, you have the fingerprint and security updates, which is known as pixel imprint. You don't really have the face unlock, location, safety and emergency, passwords and accounts, and Google customization. And then you have the system option over here. So not many customization options, not much features, and a very, very light ROM is what the Pixel 6 Pro port is. Now, ideally, that should give you a very, very good performance, right? So let's go ahead and talk about the important factors over here. Your safety net would pass by default, so you would not have any issues. Although I have rooted the device and uh, now it fails. Play Store doesn't show that the device is certified. Now let's quickly go ahead and talk about the benchmark numbers for which we will go to the Google Photos application. Now, as you can see over here, CPU throttled to 87% of its max performance and the average score was 242, 481 GIPS. That's a really, really good score. Although the performance uh, could have been better if the throttling would have been less. Now, if you go to Geekbench, something really, really weird happened over here because it scored really, really weird on the multi-core and single core was great but multi-core was really really low and if you talk about antutu benchmark over here let's see 611,000. so it was stuck and i believe that is an error so all in all you know if you ask me about the pixel 6 pro port if you want to install it you can definitely go ahead and do that most of the android 12 features are working the multitasking menu is a breeze you can you know do these multitasking quick multitasking everything works as expected there are no major lags stutters or no major issues so you can definitely try this as a daily driver for your banking application your widevine l1 is taken care of so all in all the latest pixel 6 pro port fixes dual sim and adds more smoothness is what i can say i've not tried gaming on it someday i would like to try gaming let me know in the comment section what do you think about this particular ROM. 
Until the next one, this is Kailash signing off at Phone Ops. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.